If you regularly watch football matches, chances are you've seen something a bit odd, whether that's a bizarre refereeing decision, a hilarious own goal, or that time in the 2005 Cup Final where Martin O'Neill fell backwards over a load of water balls. Nothing compares to this. I'm Keith, and these are five farcical football matches. 31-0. We start with what is probably the most famous of all the matches on this list. Back when Australia still played their football in Oceania rather than Asia, they had to play a whole host of small and underfunded teams. Teams like the Cook Islands, Vanuatu and Tahiti. Well, the smallest fish in this tiny pond was American Samoa, an American unincorporated territory with a population of only 55,000. They had never won a competitive match in their entire history and were out about to face an Australia team fresh off of a 22-0 thumping of Tonga. American Samoa kept the Socceroos out for the first 10 minutes of the match before conceding the first of what would be 31 goals, a record for an international match, with Archie Thompson himself scoring 13, also a record. But what's so far school about a big team thumping a wee team, I hear you ask? What not many people know is out the original 20-man American Samoa squad, 19 couldn't travel due to passport issues, leaving only the goalkeeper, Nicky Salupu, uh, who made 20 saves in that match, to be fair to him, as the only member of the senior squad there. What made it even worse is that it was happening during high school exams, so most of the under-20 squad couldn't go, and they ended up having three under-15s playing that day, in an average age team of 19. This is part of the reason that Australia now plays its football in Asia. One team in Tallinn. So for this one, you can actually watch the whole match on YouTube. It won't take you very long. So this, yeah, so this isn't really a football match as such, but this is my list and I say it's okay, so it's staying in. Estonia and Scotland were drawn together in the same qualifying group for France 98 World Cup and were scheduled to play each other at 6.45pm on October the 9th, 1996. However, upon seeing the facilities at the ground, Scotland lodged complaint about the quality of the floodlights, not thinking that it would be suitable for an evening kickoff. These were upheld by UEFA and the match start was moved to 3pm. However, it was a Wednesday afternoon and many of the Estonia players were part-timers, not to mention the fans and a TV deal that might have gone out the window. So Estonia decided to be just as stubborn as the Scots had been and decided not to show up. Well, they did show up, but it was for the original kickoff time. But by that point, Scotland already kicked off, had the match abandoned after three seconds and were halfway across the North Sea back to Scotland. It initially appeared that Scotland received a walkover 3-0 win. But president of UEFA, Lennart Johansson, whose home nation of Sweden and Scotland were about to face next, disagreed and ordered that the match be replayed at a neutral venue. Four months later, Estonia and Scotland played out a nil-nil draw in Monaco. So Scotland's opponents don't even turn out and they still can't manage to win. Sounds about right, doesn't it? Gold. No platinum. No diamond goal. Next, the 1994 Caribbean Cup, which had some interesting extra rules. Despite the fact that qualifying was based on the round-robin format, people decided that they didn't really want to see draws, so every single game would go to golden goal if it ended in a tie, i.e. next goal wins. Not only that, but the golden goal was to count double. So if a match ended nil-nil, but someone scored an extra time, they would win the match 2-0. Got that? That's where things get a bit weird. In the first qualifying round, Puerto Rico, Barbados and Grenada were drawn together in a group. In the first two games, Puerto Rico beat Barbados 1-0 and Grenada beat Puerto Rico 2-0 by scoring one of these golden goals. This meant that in the final match, Barbados had to win by two goals to go win the group and go through. Everything started out fine. Barbados got a 2-0 lead and looked set to go through until Grenada pulled one back in the 83rd minute of the match, which would have let them go through. Barbados desperately searched for a winning goal until they realised they could take a different approach. In the 87th minute, Realising a draw would give them another 30 minutes to score the goal that they needed, they deliberately scored an own goal to make the match 2-2. Grenada caught on to Barbados' plan at this point and tried frantically to score at either end, with Barbados defending both goals. Barbados successfully weathered both of these storms and took the match to extra time. They scored a golden goal, giving them the 4-2 win that they needed uh, to send them through to the next round. The golden rule was used five times in all in that tournament and thankfully has never been seen since. The Disgrace of Gijon Also known as the Non-Aggression Pact of Gijon and in many parts of the world, particularly Algeria, Anschluss, a reference to the Union of Austria and Nazi Germany in 1938, this match was basically fixed. In the first group stage of the 1982 World Cup, Algeria scored a shock 2-1 win over West Germany in the opening game, the first time an African nation had ever beaten a European one at a World Cup. They then lost to Austria before beating Chile, which put them in a good set spot to qualify. 
However, all three of these matches had already happened by the time West Germany lined up against Austria, so they both knew exactly what they needed to do to go through. West Germany needed a win, Austria needed to make sure they didn't get beat by three or more goals. That left the window open for a 1-2-0 or two nil win for West Germany to send both teams through. I think you know where this is going. West Germany attacked ferociously at the start of the match, until after 10 minutes they got the opening goal. Then everybody just kind of stopped trying. The match finished 1-0 with many of the neutral Spanish fans chanting for Algeria and that both teams should kiss, and Algerian fans on the ground were absolutely furious. It should be noted that some Austrian and West German fans weren't very proud of this either, with one German fan burning his flag in protest. The local newspaper El Comercio happened to print the match report in its crime section. Austria were eliminated in the next round, but West Germany went on to be runners-up, losing to Italy in the final. This match and one at the previous World Cup are part of the reason that now all final group games are in UEFA and FIFA tournaments are played simultaneously. Malagasy Madness If you ask someone what the highest scoreline in a football match has ever been, some people will maybe bring up that first Australia game that we talked about. Some will bring up our Bros 36-0 win back in 1885. But even if you added those together, doubled them, you'd still be 15 goals short of the 149 nil, the highest scoreline of any football match ever recorded. The match happened in the 2002 THB Champions League playoffs, a four-team round robin to the side the national champions of Madagascar, and the match was between AS Adema and Stade Olympique Le Merne, better local rivals from Antananarivo. Madagascan words are very hard to pronounce, and I'm not good at French either, so please forgive me. Olympique could no longer regain the league title that they were the holders of due to a controversial refereeing decision in a previous game. That refereeing decision also gave Adema the title. As a protest, Olympique deliberately scored 149 own goals. No Adema player even touched the ball after the first goal had been scored, just standing around looking bemused as the same four Adema players played the ball right back into their own net every time. After the match, Olympic coach Zaka Bey was banned for three years and then four players, including the national team captain, were suspended until the end of the season. It's safe to say that that record of 149 goals is probably going to stand for a while. So those were five truly farcical football matches. Any more that you can think of, leave them in the comments below. And like and subscribe for more stuff like this.